which I'll continue with phonons. So previously, um, I've talked about how there has to be a maximum frequency for the phonons because in in a vibrational wave in a solid, it is not possible to have a wavelength that is shorter than the spacing between atoms. So now let's find this frequency. Now the way to do it is to make use of a, a mathematical result. And the result is this, that the number of possible states um, in a solid, the number of possible vibrational states, to be precise, so this does not refer to states of uh, electrons or other particles, so just vibrational states of the atoms the kind of phonon states that we have seen previously. The number of possible vibrational states is 3n, 3 times the number of atoms. So we are just going to assume this mathematical result and we are going to derive from this the maximum frequency that is possible. Now from the density of states, g omega, if supposing that the maximum frequency is omega d, as we have defined, and called the divide frequency, then we can find the total number of states by integrating as your states from 0 to the divide frequency. Alright, so all we, know, all we have now is a name for this maximum frequency. We don't know what this frequency, this highest frequency is. That's what we want to solve for. But from this mathematical result, we know that the answer, or the, the integration must give 3n. Okay. And we have the formula for g omega, which we got previously. Um, and this function is a uh, omega squared, so we can integrate that. Let me put this in. I'll just integrate it directly. If um, I integrate this, 3 omega squared becomes omega cubed. Big V omega cubed over pi squared v cubed is equal to 3n. That and putting the limits, this is omega d. So, so now we can solve for omega d. So that should be a straightforward rearranging. Um, Let me just write down the result here. Six n pi squared v cubed over big V. To the power of one third. That's the divide frequency. Now that we know the highest frequency, we can finally go on to calculate or at least to write down an, ex an expression for the total energy.
total energy. Let's remind ourselves how it's made up. Um, it contains, it has V omega, and in this frequency interval, multiplying by G omega gives the number of states, multiplying by number of particles in one state gives number of particles in D omega, and multiplying by each power omega, the energy of one photon gives energy in this interval and integrating from zero to the highest possible frequency gives the total energy. Then, make, we substitute those expressions into here. H power omega there, the D omega there, that and that, and we have a G omega from that. So, in for the G omega, most of the factors are constants except for the omega squared. I'll leave the omega squared in now, right? constant factors outside. So that's the total energy. Now this integral cannot be uh, integrated easily, but we can make use of a formula. or a, a result from the table of integrals. We have seen um, right, this result can help us to integrate this, but um, But there is a, a problem. The integrand can be transformed from this to look like that. All right, because you have the exponential there, and we can set the x to be equal to the argument here, and the x cubed there corresponds to the omega cubed here. The problem is the upper limit. The upper limit in this integral is finite, but in this formula is infinity. So unfortunately, this cannot integral cannot solve this expression completely. Now, what we could do is to try and find u at the high and low temperature limits. Now in the low temperature limit, the way to do it is to transform, make the substitution that this is equal to x.
Okay, we are going to do the low temperature limit where T becomes small. So then we need to make the substitution. We need to make omega the subject. So that would be kV T x over h bar. We will substitute this into the omega here, here, and here. And for the upper limit, We would replace the upper limit by x, where x is, uh, well, by substituting omega d into the omega here, and I'll, we'll call this x d. So this would be replaced by x d. And now we can see that if t becomes very small, since t is in the denominator here, x d goes to infinity. So finally we have the limit, the upper limit, going to infinity and then we can make use of this formula. So, in, so this means that we can, like, we can make use of this formula only in the case of very small t. So let's write this out and see what it looks like. getting crowded. Now let's just remember this expression that it is pi 4 over 15 minutes away. Becomes x e to the x minus one. There's the h bar from that which I can take out. For the omega here, there are there is the omega here, two factors, there's one here and one here. So altogether four terms of omega, which is related to x by this expression. In this expression, we have x multiplied by kBt over h bar. So the four omega factors there will give four factors of the kBt over h bar. So I'll write that out. kBt over h bar to the power of four. And then what remains would be the x that has to be substituted in there. So that those will give a x cubed and that gives an dx. Alright. And when omega is zero, when omega is zero, x is zero, that's the lower limit. When omega is omega d upper limit is xd, but when t goes to zero, like this, the upper limit goes to infinity. Right, xd goes to infinity. So, and when xd goes to infinity, we know the answer to this integral from the formula. It is pi power 4 divided by 15. So that's this integral and then I have this. Let's simplify this. I have a 3 big B right there is a KB power 4 from there. There is 
2 pi squared v cubed from there. That is h bar power 4 and the h bar on top. So the h bar cubed below and there is a t to the power 4. There is this and there is that. So this is the expression for u at um, very low temperatures. It is related to t to the power of 4. Now the important thing about this result is that it can be checked against experiments. And But before that, let's write now finally an expression for heat capacity. That we can obtain by doing du by dt. When we differentiate t to the power of 4, we get t cubed times 4. So the t4 becomes t cubed. And then you have all the other factors that are constants. So it's t cubed some times some other constants, which I, I shall write down. Um, but in the case of um, phonon heat capacity, we often use the letter A to represent these constant factors. I just call everything here A. So this is an expression for the heat capacity and it can be checked by measurements. So measurements that has been carried out using uh, um, usually non-metals because metals would complicate things uh, with by, uh, the electrons having a heat capacity as well. So in non-metals like for example potassium chloride measurements has been carried out to check this relation and the graphs which have been plotted might um, for example, it might be convenient instead of plotting against C against T cubed and we expect to get a curve, if we plot C over T against T squared. So you get C over T by dividing both sides of this by T and you get T squared on that side. If we measure it has been measured experimentally and the points on this graph are found to fall on a straight line. So this, this demonstrates that this re relation is correct, that the heat capacity indeed varies as T cubed at very low temperatures. And very low temperatures means um, of the order of a few Kelvin. Right, so this is what happens in the low temperature limit. Now let's have a look at the high temperature limit. The high temperature limit is easier when T goes to infinity, this expression here Omega squared times omega. Omega cubed, d omega. Each bar, take out. And when t goes to, to infinity, that argument in the exponential becomes very small. So e to the power of a, of a very small number Write this out separately. E 
as this series so when x is very small I can just take the first two terms so likewise for this one it becomes approximately 1 plus that h1 omega over k d t minus 1 so the 1 and the 1 cancel and I can divide those two omega cubed divided by omega is omega squared and kbt can be taken out as well so 3 v over 2 pi squared v cubed h bar and h bar cancels kbt comes out here and omega cancels with omega cubed to give an omega squared and integrate omega squared gives one third omega cubed and substituting the um, upper limit gives omega d cubed and we we have already we already have the expression for the Debye frequency so we can substitute that inside here and then after rearranging dot 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 the final answer looks like this 3 m kb t So that's the total energy, and from this we can obtain an expression for heat capacity, EUDT. Differential T gives 1, and the answer is 3 and KB. So it's a constant. It's a constant with respect to the temperature. And with this result, we can sketch a curve of the heat capacity against temperature. We already know that at low temperatures it goes as T cubed. So from near zero it goes like this. So this part is the shape of a T cubed curve. But at high temperature it goes closer and closer to this constant 3 and kb so the curve and sketch would look like this and this high temperature heat capacity can be easy, easily measured at room temperature and has been shown to agree with this prediction so in this way, using this phonon model, it is possible, and we have obtained um, the correct heat capacity for the low temperature and the high temperature limits. And it has also been shown by numerical calculations that uh, the heat capacity calculated at other temperatures also agree with measurements.
let's continue with photons. Uh, we consider black body radiation. Ideally, a black body is an object that can absorb all radiation. Now, in practice, it is made by using a, a hollow box with a little hole. So that when light or other radiation goes through the hole, it bounces around many times inside and eventually gets converted to heat. So in that way, the little hole is like a perfectly black body. Now, but these photons bouncing around within this box means that we can think of all the photons in this box like a gas, a gas of photons. And that again also means that we can use the ideal gas model to, at least as a start, to calculate the energy as well as to hopefully predict the spectrum of um, black body, the radiation that would also get emitted through the hole, or the black body radiation. So to think of this, thinking of this black did uh, this box as a, as a gas of photon, we can then derive the radiation formula for a black body. Okay, so then to derive this radiation formula, we must first obtain the total energy. Is the radiation spectrum would, fall, would be directly related to the spectrum of the energy distribution inside the, the box. So what we need to do then is, to, is that we need to find the total energy in order to keep, get the radiation spectrum. And so instead of finding the heat capacity like we did for phonons, electrons and real gases, we now want to find the spectrum of the black body radiation. But as it turns out, in order to do that, it's the same as the spectrum of energy in the box. And that means that we need to do the same thing as we did for phonons and electrons. We need to find the total energy in the box. And the way to find the total energy follows the same method. In fact, it's very similar to what I've done for phonons. Okay, so let's quickly review the similarities. There is first the density of states. Now because we can think of the photons as bouncing around in the box and not interacting with each other, we can treat it as, as an ideal gas. And therefore, we can use the ideal gas density of states. of the phonons are converted it to the variable transform it to the variable of frequency and it takes this form so that was the phonon density of states in the case of photons it's very similar but we need to make some change. So first of all, 
That was the velocity of sound in the case of phonons. Since we are talking about photons, this has to change to the speed of light. The factor of 3 there for phonons comes from the three possible polarizations of vibrations in a solid, two transverse and one longitudinal. In the case of photons traveling through a vacuum in a box, there are only two polarizations, both are transverse. So this must change the two. So this gives us the phonon, the, the photon density of states. So the, there's some difference from the pol, uh, phonons because of the polarization and, and the speed. Now the next similarity to um, phonons come when we consider the Debye, think about the Debye frequency. In the case of phonons, we have a Debye frequency which is the highest um, frequency that, that is possible in, for a wave in a solid because wavelengths cannot be shorter than the spacing between atoms. In the case of photons, there is no such problem because it is electromagnetic wave traveling through a vacuum. So the wavelength can be as short as possible, can be uh, just any length. So we don't have this divide frequency limit. So frequency can be, as, can be any value as long as there is enough energy. Um, As long as there, there, there are there are photons at those uh, enough energy for photons to exist at those frequencies. Okay. Now the next thing that we need um, is the number of particles in a state in a particular energy state. So we have derived that for the photons. Um, using the model that phonons are bosons and that mean, which means that we can have any number of bosons or phonons occupying the same energy states and then we went through the Lagrange multiplier method to der derive an expression for the number of particles in the states or the, the distribution of particles now in the case of photons we can use exactly the same method because like like phonons, uh, which has no constraint on the number of particles, photons also has no constraint on the, on the number of photons because these are not real particles. So at higher temperature, there will be more photons. More photons will be generated in the box. So therefore, this exact same Lagrange multiplier uh, method and results can be used. So the distribution frequency or energy distribution of photons is exactly the same as for photons. Same formula. Uh, and the, the energy of a photon and the energy of a phonon are the same. H power omega. So we have all that we need now to calculate the total energy. Let me make use of what I've written. Now, rather than writing down the integral expression directly, right? Um, 
that be? We can do that first anyway. So the total energy is obtained by taking um, number of states in this frequency interval multiplied by the number of photons in each state then multiplied by the energy and to find total energy we integrate over all possible frequency and this time we can go all the way to infinity so that's the expression for the total energy and we, are, we know F is this and G is that Now if we substitute this two into here, we get an expression that looks almost exactly the same as the expression we had for phonons in the low temperature limit. If you recall just from just now, in low temperature limit for phonons, the Debye frequency in, in this integration goes to becomes um, transformed to infinity and we ended up with an expression that contains a, a constant factor times t to the power of 4 and when we differentiate that we have t cubed that became our the heat capacity dependence at low temperature for phonons now in this case it looks exactly the same, almost, except that instead of a factor of 3 that came from that, that uh, we had for phonons, we now had a factor of 2. Right? So, except for a change in, in the factors, it looks exactly the same. And in the case of phonons, uh, photons and back body radiation, this t to the power of 4 leads on to what is called the Stefan's law of radiation. Okay. So Stefan's law of radiation, um, if you think about the box with the little hole, it tells us the power that is radiated from the box. Okay, the power, um, let's see. As Stefan's law tells us the power of radiation coming out from the little hole or the black body per unit area of the black body. So, so I shan't go into more details on the Stefan's law because it has to be obtained by considering the radiation coming out at the different angles and doing a proper integration over the angle. Okay, so what I'm going to talk more about is the, fre the frequency spectrum. So let's go back to the total energy integral. In this step, I have integrated over, over frequency. Now, but let's look at what happens if we do not, if we do not integrate over the frequency. In other words, let's look at this function here. If we do not integrate it, this function would in fact be just the frequency spectrum. Let me write down an expression for that. So I'll call that u, u omega. u omega F, which has this exponential factor, I 
as this exponential at the denominator then there is g omega right, g omega contributes uh, omega squared there there is an omega there, so I have omega squared omega cubed omega from there and omega squared from there and the rest are constant factors I could cancel the, this 2 and this 2 there there is h bar so let me write this out so as a constant factor I would have v bar divided by 2 pi squared c cubed okay so that would be my u right that would be the u omega This expression here then gives us the energy spectrum. If we sketch a graph of this, of the frequency spectrum, if we sketch a graph of this, we can start by thinking about again the low and high limit. So at the low uh, frequency limit, omega goes to zero. Um, it's a little bit tricky here where we have in the expression an exponential but when omega goes to zero this argument becomes very small and once again we can use this series take the first two terms all right so when omega goes to zero this becomes for now if I just ignore the constant factor this becomes omega cubed over that would be 1 plus h bar omega over kb t minus 1 so the 1 and the 1 cancel omega there cancel the omega cubed so that when omega goes to zero, this goes to zero. So that I have one point at zero when omega is zero in the graph. Now, when omega goes to infinity, omega cubed goes to infinity, the exponential also goes to infinity. But because the exponential goes faster than omega cubed, so the curve would tend to zero at high omega and in between for uh, values of frequency in between we would expect some positive values therefore uh, a rough sketch of the curve would give something like that with a peak somewhere so that's the radiation spectrum as given by this formula and since Planck derived this it has been verified by many experiments and this today this formula and this curve is very useful it allows us to for example, determine the temperatures of objects by measuring the spectrum of the radiation. 
and this is particularly useful for objects that are either very far away like the sun or the cosmic uh, background in outer space or um, objects that are very hot that we, we cannot touch with our hands or a normal thermometer so by using an instrument to measure the radiation and analyze the spectrum the, the measurement could give a certain spectrum and the idea is that we can then make use of this radiation formula and vary the T, the temperature term there as an unknown factor until this function gives a curve that fits closely with the experimental results. So in this way, we can actually um, determine the temperature. And in fact, as an ex example, this is one way in which the temperature of the cosmic microwave background has been determined by measuring the radiation of deep space that the, the small amount uh, of the radiation from deep space that, that reaches Earth and plotting a, spec, a graph of, the, of this microwave background and then fitting it with this curve it has been determined that a value of T that is about just under 3 Kelvin gives a good fit and that's how um, it was found that the cosmic background or that deep space has a, a temperature of about 3 Kelvin and we can do that with the sun as well measure the sun spectrum and fit this curve All right and a useful thing to know about this curve is that if we differentiate this curve we can find the peak we can find the value of the frequency where this is a maximum Let me write down these results. If we do that, um, this is the result. Now the F here is related to the frequency there by omega over 2 pi. Now if I call that omega uh, 1, for example, the F there is given by omega 1 over 2 pi. And the 2.82 there is in SR units. Alright? So this is a formula that tells us the frequency, the peak frequency for a particular temperature and in fact this is a form of the Wien's displacement law right? which is more commonly expressed in terms of, uh, of wavelength rather than frequency but this is the frequency form of the Wien's displacement law and it allows us to estimate the kind of peak wave uh, frequency which is also the, the, the frequency which contains uh, the largest amount of the radiation energy around it we can, we can use this formula to estimate for a given temperature what is the kind of um, what is the main frequency you expect in the radiation? So for example, and alternatively, if we look at, say, a an object that's glowing very hot, and we can see the color of the glow, then we can use the, the frequency of that color, put it in here, and estimate a number for the temperature. 
So it becomes a very useful formula, this, this Planck's radiation formula today in various types of measurements. Yeah. So we'll stop here for this session.